Hi guys, Perla here. Um, so it's probably a little bit past midnight, which means it's already Sunday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome to my channel, Imperfectly Perfect. Um, today, well, yesterday, I guess I should say March, whatever, Saturday. It was one of those days that I really used to, um, <clears throat> used to dread. Um, having, I hated them. There goes the dog. And, um, the reason for that is I'm not, how can I put it? I was never used to taking naps. I was never used to, um, taking the time to, um, take care of myself, like in a physical way, as far as like sleeping and stuff like that. I've always been you know, how much can I do in 24 hours? Or, you know, how much can I do in the three or four hours that I have, you know, after work or, um, you know, on a Saturday when I don't have the kids and stuff like that. So what I have learned throughout, like, the last, sorry, my dog, what I have learned throughout the last um, couple of years is that um, self-love and self-care needs to come first. And... For some, self-care and self-love um, means many different things. But it's basically, in my opinion, taking care of yourself and whatever whatever that means for you. So for me, I have... Anytime that I'm able to take a nap and I don't have um, REM, and I'm sorry that my phone is shaking so much, and just I'm holding it. Anytime I'm able to nap without REM is... It's awesome. I, I feel completely different. And I mean, sorry again, that was my dog. <laughs> my naps are usually about an hour. But I have days like today, um, depending on what's going on in my life, they they happened either more frequently or less frequently, depending how much I fight taking naps throughout the weeks and throughout the days. So... <sighs> I got up at 5 this morning, and I was in bed by, I want to say, like, maybe 9.30 or 10, um, napping. Now, from 9.30, 9.30 or 10, I was going to get up in an hour to get some stuff done. Well, that didn't happen. Um, I don't know if you've ever had, oh, let's put it this way. <sighs> For those that don't have narcolepsy, to see if you guys can relate. Um, you know, and every morning when you wake up and you hit the snooze button and you fall right back to sleep. And there's some days where it's really, really, really hard to um, to get out of your dream. Like, you know, I don't know if you've ever woken up like in the middle of a dream. Well, that's technically what today was about. So it's like I would sit up and try to get out of bed and the next thing I know I'm like literally like falling back and falling back to sleep and it was just like a cycle 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 but I just kept going back into REM now I remember bits and pieces of my my dreams or whatever but it was just like that non-stop now normally I would fight that off um and I would get so angry with myself because I'm like you know I can't spend an entire day sleeping like, let's be real. Like, I just can't. So, I've decided a long time ago, well, not that long ago, but a while ago, that I was not going to be upset over it anymore, that I was going to just deal with it. Um, turns out that my body needs it. Um, when you go a week on end without you know, getting more than like two, maybe three hours. Very rarely do I get three hours at a time of sleep at once. Um, your body physically needs to recover. And yeah, I can take six or seven one hour naps to try to equal the, you know, the six or seven hours, eight hours of sleep that people are supposed to get. But at the end of the day, it's not the same. So when I have days like this, the house could be completely turned over. I really do not care. I don't care anymore. I'm going to sleep the day away because my body needs to recover. My body needs to rest. My body needs to heal. 
from like all the overworked and all the over everything so i guess today's message is when you have days where you're trying your best to get out of bed and you just can't stop fighting it i feel like the more we fight it the the longer the um, i can't, really, can't even keep my eyes open because i want really want to go back to sleep um the longer i feel like we're in that cycle so i just try you know if i wake there he goes dragging his bone i swear to god this dog wants attention so the more we allow it to just do its thing i think the better for me anyway pers personally the faster i get to my day my normal days where you know um up three to four hours at a time and then not being an hour in between or 30 minutes or whatever it is that my body wants to do so above all just self-love and self-care and just listen to your body your body's going to tell you exactly what it needs as far as um rest go and stuff like that yeah i really do feel that Whew. more times than none we are fighting something that is what our body considers normal so our our body our you know our internal clock is not regulated it's not like normal people so it doesn't realize that we are supposed to sleep you know eight you know six to eight hours or whatever it is and that we're supposed to go through these stages and that everything is supposed to be balanced it's completely thrown off for us so in a sense this is what normal is to us like to me this is normal to me it's normal to go a week or two where um you know barely getting three hours of sleep throughout the day and i mean that's trying to take naps because just because i say oh i take a nap or i went in and i laid down like three or four times to take a nap doesn't mean that i always manage to nap and sometimes my naps can be anywhere from like five minutes to an hour it really depends on what my body needs and i feel like just you know when you accept like that this is what it is and you try to look at it um, as positive as you can, then your perspective on everything in life starts to change. Um, at this point, I really, in general, like to people that are like, you know, my families and stuff like that, like I've explained it to the point where I've gone red in the face. So if, if they cannot understand what I'm saying, then that's okay but i no longer allow comments when people say oh but you've been home all day why didn't you sleep or oh just go take a nap or you know you need to fight this mentally or like when people say those comments i no longer get upset because i know that i did my part i shared with you and i tried to explain it to you in the best of my ability and in a way that I feel like you will be able to understand because, it, you know, I have to explain it to people in different ways because not everybody's at the same level of understanding. So realizing that I did my part and I cannot control the way other people um, interpret the information that I gave them, I just kind of, you know, now when they say certain things, I just look at them and I'm like, okay and i just walk away i don't feed into it anymore because before i used to i used to feel like i had to defend you know and go right back like from the top to the bottom you know what no now i just be like oh okay and i just let it go and then it becomes you know it's not that i really don't care about them or about their opinion it's just they have not realized how much it really affects me and it can be their own how can I put it? Some people want to understand, some people don't. Some people, excuse me, some people are stuck in their ways and that's fine. And they're not willing to, you know, learn something new or to see things from a different point of view. And that's fine. What I want us to know is that we need to take care of ourselves. We need to feel as rested as we can so that we can function the best way that we can because it's not so much a lack of sleep that we have um and you know 
because we i like i said we can sleep some of us can sleep 17 18 hours a day and wake up like we haven't slept is the the lack of balance the lack of rest we don't rest just because we're sleeping regardless of how long we're sleeping does not mean that we're actually resting so it's like you can be what analogy can i use you can be in a treadmill and walk on a treadmill for six hours or seven hours and burn let's say a hundred calories because you're walking like you know like you're freaking the snail and then you have somebody that hops on the treadmill and runs a mile in like eight minutes or seven minutes they're gonna burn so much more calories than you because their body they're pushing their body to the point where it's doing what it's supposed to be doing so we are basically not our our brain and our body or whatever is not working to its capacity when it comes to resting so we have to try to figure out a way one to accept it two to own it and three figure out a schedule that works for you and when i say for you i mean you not what's gonna work around you know this person or that person or you know it has to be a, you have to put yourself first number one when you go your entire life being exhausted and I mean exhausted. And for those of you that don't understand, just think of a day that one, let's say you drank tonight too much the night the night before, and you're waking up the next morning, you know, with that foggy, um, dehydrated type of feeling of a brain. Two, let's say you've worked um, 16, 17 hours straight, and you have to be back at work in like three hours. So you know that when you're going to work, all you can think about is like wanting to go back to sleep because your body is craving it, okay? So now imagine those two things together and not, you know, let's say you can't have coffee or you can't have anything, no stimulants or anything like that. That's how we feel on a normal basis. That's us getting up in the morning That's or whenever we get up. So... We just have to, um, we have to accept who we are and we have to stop apologizing for, for being tired and for being sleepy. We have to stop apologizing. I catch myself apologizing less and less every day, but I used to a lot, but we have to stop apologizing because the person that has, and like, you know. People, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, but it's not the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. But when a person has cancer or a person um, has diabetes or a person has high blood pressure and a person has this and a person has that or a person is allergic to cats and a person is allergic to dogs and a person is this and a person, they're not apologizing 24-7 because they can and cannot do certain things. If my, you know... If I'm allergic to dogs, I'm not going to be, you know, going to somebody that has a dog like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that I'm allergic to your dog. Or if I was diagnosed with breast cancer, you know, and I cannot go and I don't feel up to going with you to the supermarket, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that I have breast cancer. I'm so sorry that I can't go with you. And like, I'm not, this video is not intended in any way to make fun of anything. I am just saying that we need to stop apologizing because people, because it's something that is physically not seen by other people. We tend that we tend to have the need to want to apologize at all times for having something that we did not choose to have in the first place. So, you know, take it as however you want, um, interpret whatever I'm saying, however you want to, um, it really doesn't make a difference to me. I'm just, I'm just saying for those of us that have it and those of us that have, you know, there's, if you, if you just so much as pick up a book or, you know, start researching things, there's so many different, um, sleep issues and so many different issues in general like there's people that have thyroid issues there's a lot of people that have and again because these things are not spoken about openly people do not seem to understand so 
I am trying my best to bring awareness as to, you know, what our days are like, how we tend to view ourselves. And basically, in a way, I want to try to inspire people to just own who they are. And you know what? Keep moving forward. We can't please anybody. We can't, not anybody, I shouldn't say that. We can't please everybody, but we can definitely please ourselves. We can make ourselves happy in a sense of being okay with who we are. Happiness is like, you know, I have this thing on the wall that says happiness is not a destination. It's a way of life. So to me, that mean more than anything means, you know, the way we seem to view things. If we continue to see things negative, that is exactly what we're going to be we're going to continue to do and we're not and we're going to be so focused on the negative that we're not going to try to find a solution we're not going to try to find a different way of doing things but if we try to focus on the positive and we try to focus on the goods and things um then <clears throat> maybe we can try to figure out a way to better deal with it and better um handle our situation I say I have superpowers. I can be sleeping in, a, in like, you know, three rooms down and you can be having a conversation with somebody and I am dreaming and listening to your conversation at the same time. And I can tell you what you said word to word. Uh, not many people can say that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just try to look at as much positive. Oh my God, you're going to knock down the TV dude over that bone? I'm sorry, my dog is about to knock down my TV. Um, so just try to look, you know, the positive. Thank you. Bye-bye.